What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of House Flipper. As always, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like, and the video would be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, we actually scooped up this beautiful modern villa with the hopes of us being able to flip it into our new office, or I guess house, I suppose. But having said that, if you guys missed the previous episode, make sure you go back and watch it. Link to the series playlist is always in the description. If you're looking at it now and you're thinking it's in pretty good condition, you really have to see what it looked like before. Dude, this thing was a disaster. Now, I think what I want to start with today is actually going to be the kitchen. My wife recently told me she's really been digging these uh, these green kitchens that she's been seeing on Pinterest or, or TikTok or, or wherever, you know, she finds the stuff that she looks at, right? Now, I really think that there's a lot we can do with some green cabinetry. In the previous, you know, big kitchen that we did, it was it was all blue, everything, daba dee, daba die type stuff. And so uh, we, we went with the blue, but we also had gold hardware. And I think gold hardware with green cabinetry is actually going to work Perfectly. So the first thing I want to do here is just try to figure out a nice configuration, maybe buy a few appliances and, and place those around, see what sort of thing we can uh, get going here. Okay, right off the bat, we have way too many different options of green. Um, so I'm I'm calling Oxana. Hey, hun. Yeah. Can you can you just come in here real quick? I, I got a question for you. Okay. Okay. I know you poor thing. You're over there studying, but I have three different shades of green here for cabinetry. I need you to tell me which one you like the most. We have dark green, green, or emerald ocean. This was, it, it's more of a teal than green. I've done blue before, and I really like that with, with gold hardware. This one, don't like it? Okay. Dark green? Yeah? Not, not emerald. Too teal? Okay. All right. Well, there it is. Dark green. That's what we're going with. Thanks, son. Okay, I'm just gonna set this thing down temporarily so we can sort of see what we're what we're gonna end up with here. I'm using this one because it has uh, a lot of green to it. It has a lot of gold as well, a lot of hardware on here. And then the countertop section is pretty large as well. So we can really get a good feel of what it's all gonna look like uh, when it's all said and done here. I really like how abstract the, the new marble texture countertop looks. And since this kitchen as a whole is gonna be pretty abstract, I feel like that is gonna look Pretty dang sick. And then gold hardware, of course. You just can't beat it. Well, you could, but that would be weird. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a few minutes since we last saw each other, but I think I'm starting to get a decent configuration going here in the kitchen. I will say, though, I'm not super attached to either one of these windows, and honestly, it's kind of making me have to create a, a very unique shape to this place. Like, uh, I'm not really loving how these cabinets aren't exactly able to meet. You know, we, we can't have our normal L-shaped kitchen over here. I do actually think the island in this location is going to work way better than islands we've done in the past. Just because, you know, if, if we want to get an L-shaped island going, we'd have to add another cabinet on the end, which is going to, of course, push this thing out to like here. And it's just, it's just going to look weird. You know, it's just not going to look right. So what I think we need to do next is actually just go through and get rid of this window for starters, and then we'll see about that one. Like I said, I think we can kind of work around it, but the kitchen just looks so odd without any uh, cabinetry. You know, we have the base cupboards, but we need something up on the walls for sure. As I'm starting to piece together the cabinetry for this kitchen, I just had like a revelation. I realized I've never actually tried to incorporate a microwave into a kitchen the way that most people's microwaves are incorporated. That being right above, like elevated above their oven. Now, I know not all houses or not all apartments are going to be set up this way, but I need to figure out a way to make this happen because, again, I've never done it. You know, we always just put the microwave on the countertop, which most people do with, like, toasters or, or smaller appliances, but microwaves usually have, like, a little cubby just above the oven. So I'm going to try, like, some shelf modules that might be green and, and a few other ideas that I have, and we'll see what we can get to happen here. Okay, as you guys can see here, the microwave is now completely suspended. Well, not suspended. It's elevated by these shelf modules that are green, but I just don't like the look of them down there. So the ultimate test here is if we can sell these, hopefully the microwave won't fall with it. Oh my god, of course. Of course there's actual gravity in the game. That is just something else. Okay, so I need to figure out I need to figure out a way to make this happen still, dude. I, I'm not giving up yet. 
One minute, 37 seconds later. It definitely seems like the only way to actually achieve this just using the base game stuff is the shelf method that we were just trying. However, luckily for us, we do have access to the Steam Workshop. So I headed over there real quick, just typed microwave, and we had three fantastic options to choose from. Of course, the base game gives us the microwave oven, and then I think if you have like the Cyberpunk DLC stuff, you should also have access to this Cyberwave microwave that just it's it's awful it's horrible to look at it's disgusting but thankfully we have these three options here so we have the ozk microwave this one is still only mountable on surfaces which you know makes sense right that's how a microwave kind of works so unfortunately with this one we can't hang it up on the wall or anything like that but we have two other ones that supposedly you can't so first up we have this one that's 78 dollars and it is white however way too wide for our cabinets right there next we have this black one that i believe is supposed to be a little smaller okay there we go you know what it's close it's definitely close but it's not quite the size that i was hoping for there is however one last thing that i think we can try here so rather than using this smaller dummy cabinet right there i'm gonna uh, i don't want to sell these just in case we can use them again so i'm just gonna move these out of the way temporarily we'll bring down this dummy cabinet till about there and now if we just sort of shimmy the microwave in place i think this might actually work all righty i think now i think we're good we have finally done what we set out to do and that is have a nice microwave just above our oven dude i cannot believe I've already been recording this episode for a little over an hour, and we've only just started, just scratched the surface on this kitchen here. Now, for our next move, what I want to do is actually sell both of those windows, because I'm just, I'm not feeling them. I'm really not, tell you the truth. What I want to do is add a very, very large vertical window in between these two cabinets right here. I think that's going to look pretty nice. So let's go through the store. We'll see what sort of options we have to choose from. Oh, right out the gate, dude. This is perfect. A floor to ceiling window, or at least I think so. It's hard to tell with the sort of ghost outline. So let's go ahead and smash out this wall. We'll see what it's going to look like. It's not bad. Definitely not bad. But of course, this cabinet here on the end has to go. It's just, it's not really working, right? It's, it's covering the window definitely not what uh, not what we're after here so now I don't think we're gonna have another cabinet that's gonna be small enough to fit in this little pocket here so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one and we'll find two small ones that will hopefully equal one big one if you guys get what I'm saying probably not but that's cool or we could just try one big one potentially oh that looks about perfect dude it looks about perfect. Let's see if it is. It sure is. Oh, that is spot on. It looks kind of strange because we have the same cabinet here and here or cupboard, I guess. But it's okay. It's okay. You know what? I'm digging this. I'm digging this. I'm trying to like bring in the modern touches from the exterior into the interior as well. And I feel like this window is going to really help us out uh, in doing that. But I want to see what it looks like from the outside because that's, a, you know, that's a big factor as well. Definitely don't want the thing to look ugly. I actually kind of dig that. That looks pretty solid. I'm I'm definitely happy with this decision. But now we're going to go through and do a little bit of paneling, some painting, some flooring on the inside. And then I think we'll be ready to move on to the next room. Alrighty, just before we move on to the next room, I completely forgot that we got rid of our view just behind our sink. So I want to I wanna make sure we get a nice window in place for that. Before we had two smaller windows sort of side by side, I think I want to do just one medium size window here, roughly in the center of the sink, of course, as close as we can get it. I'm happy with this. So this is the Liam window uh, without shutters. So on the outside, it's not gonna look weird at all. I dig it, man. I dig it a lot. But of course, we gotta fill in that weird like concrete texture on either side with some just some white paint for the time being. And now with the kitchen pretty much complete, we're gonna turn our attention into the living room slash dining room area. The dining room, I think I wanna have more so just in front of these very, very big doors here, just in the back of the property. And then the living room, Probably going to be the same place it was before. Surprise, surprise. However, I want to try to do a sort of built-in thing with a fireplace and some other stuff just on this wall here. I wanted to build out the center of this wall. That's going to act as sort of our false chimney. And now I think I actually want to go with this 
electric fireplace. None of the other ones are really doing it for me. They don't really match the, the style, the overall style of this property. So I'm going to plop this thing down right about there. I think that should look pretty solid. And now you're probably wondering, 2G, what the heck's going on with these other little pillars over here? What I would like to do with those is basically fill in the tops all with lentils. So we'll just do that real quick. There we go. And I haven't tested any of this stuff either. So I really have no idea if this is going to look good or if it's even going to work. But we're going to type shelf in here and we're going to scroll down until we find the shelf modules. These little buggers right here. As for the wood selection, I think I'm going to go with the Brazil nut for the time being. We'll see if this even looks good first, I suppose. But we're going to get these brought out to each end something like that so from far away it looks pretty good but when you get up close you can see the line sort of breaking up each individual shelf so let's see if there are any other options here oh my god this is perfect dude this even has like a, a backing to it that's gonna work way better oh but look at how much deeper it is than everything else and it doesn't fit perfectly god dang it i thought i thought it was spot on if we did want a larger shelf piece we could use the one just above here but it doesn't really span the entire width of this sort of built-in that we're trying to do so i think we're going to end up just going with these i'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get them all put in their proper position we'll see what this thing's going to look like i really need to know you guys have you ever seen anything like this before in house flipper i feel like this is a pretty original idea not gonna not gonna pat myself on the back too much but for the time being, we have uh, this sort of horizontal narrow board shiplap just behind the shelves just to, you know, add a bit more contrast. I felt like if there was too much wood, it might not look the greatest. So this is what we're going with so far. And then on top of that, we have painted brick, which I feel like kind of matches the modern vibe as well. You know, you could have some brick. But if you if you want to keep the modern thing going, you, you might want to paint it, maybe. But needless to say, dude, I am absolutely loving this property so far. I think it's coming together very, very nicely. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I also added this little uh, locker set just because it, it kind of fit this space a little too perfectly. So I couldn't uh, I could not do it. Next up, I think I'm finally going to get rid of those uh, ceiling lamps that we've had for far too long. And we're going to find ourselves a TV for this space. I think the 85 inch TV that we usually use, the wall mounted one, I think that's probably a bit too big for this room. So let's go with this one. I think that'll be, oh dude, that is the perfect size. It's a, you know what? It's a little on the small side. Do we have anything that's just slightly bigger? Oh, here we go. We have a workshop made 77 inch TV. Oh, there we go. That is what we were looking for. I think I'm going to put that roughly right there looks pretty solid of course with this being a workshop tv unfortunately we can't actually turn the thing on it's not going to display anything but that is a-okay we need some sort of accent light on this as well i feel like that would look really nice maybe like within the shelves i suppose maybe not i i don't know dude i'm so torn this is all this is all so new you know i've never done anything like this so uh, let's just move on to the couch. We really don't have a ton of room in our in our living room. It's just, it's a little awkward because, you know, we still want enough space to be able to go up and down the steps. We definitely can't fit an L-shaped couch in here because then it would completely cut off our, our front entryway. So basically a three-seater or a, a love seat is just about the only option for in here. But I think that should be plenty of seating. After all, how many of you actually use your living room i find myself uh, more often like lounging in my office or even in my bed rather than the living room anyways i think it is now finally time to start working on this dining room so we're gonna go all the way back to furniture under dining room and i think i'm gonna pick out a table first i'm definitely not trying to do anything like super fancy for this dining room just because we've done something pretty unique i feel like in in both the kitchen as well as the living room space so we're gonna we're gonna keep this a little bit on the simpler side i'm gonna use this table that has the exact same sort of countertop look to the kitchen and then as for the chairs i don't know i almost feel like we need an accent color something that's going to complement the green fairly well like what we kind of did in the living room is use just green accent color pillows on a, a light gray couch something very neutral something that'll blend very well 
but I don't know what sort of accent color we could use for green. Let's take a look at the chairs that go along with that table. I think then we might be able to figure out what we should do in here. We have the dark chairs. We could do green. Red would be far too Christmassy. Violet, actually, not terrible. Here it is, matte black. That's that's the move right here. That is definitely the move. Alrighty, all the chairs have now been placed around this table. Looking pretty solid in here. We have eight chairs going around this thing. But now we need some sort of big, not fancy, but nice looking chandelier. What in God's name is this, dude? What would you even use this for? A dance floor, maybe? Hang on, blue, green, oh no. Oh no, what have they done? What have they done? What is that, dude? I don't dig it. I don't dig I think that's maybe part of the cyberpunk stuff that they just recently released. I, no idea. No idea. They have single ones as well. I'm not really feeling any of those. These are pretty neat though. If you wanted to do sort of an, an oriental theme maybe in a, in a property, you could probably use one of these lanterns. That's pretty rad. But of course, we're not doing an oriental theme for this property. So let's see what other sort of lighting options we have. We need something that looks, again, not necessarily fancy. Elegant, I suppose, is a, is a good word to use. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure elegant and fancy kind of mean the same thing. So I'm going to try this. We just need to make sure it's centered on this table. What do we think about that? You know what? Mm, I don't dig it. You know why? It looks like it looks like wind chimes. Something that you'd like hang out on your front porch and and just listen to it jingle jangle all day. I'm not I'm not feeling that. We could always do the $3500 chandelier. This thing is very very fancy. I'm okay with this. I think that actually looks pretty nice in here. Now we need some sort of smaller cabinet. So I'm quite literally Oh wait wait wait. No, I I have one in mind actually. I think it's called the simple something. Yeah, simple Cabinet, simple white. I was going to say simple white cabinet, but that works too, I suppose. I'm going to put this right underneath this window over here. And then we need something else to dress this this window up. Maybe, uh, maybe a long curtain might look pretty good. This might be a little questionable, I think. I'm going with a golden curtain rod here and dark green curtains that like perfectly match our cabinets here in the kitchen. I don't know... I don't know what to think. Oh, I had to move this cabinet too so we could actually get that thing to, to mount up just above the window. So let's place that back right about there. Perfect. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not I'm not 100% sold on it. I feel like our dining room stuff really needs some, some advancement. You know, we kind of do the same thing for our dining spaces and uh, they just, they, they look a little lackluster. They're kind of boring. There's just not really a whole lot going on in here, but with that being said, we need to add some more lighting in here. We've got to adjust all the lighting in the kitchen. That looks god awful. Uh, and then we're going to move into the bathroom shortly after finishing that. But this place is, is coming along. It's definitely coming together. Alrighty, dudes and dudettes. The lighting in this place is looking so much better now. We have three sort of long hanging Edison bulbs just above our island here in the kitchen. We also only have three halogen lamps in there rather than the original four. As far as the dining room goes, I do think there's there's a little bit more accent lighting that we could possibly add later on down the road. And actually, for this whole place, there is much, much more decor that's going to be added at, at a later date. We usually do that towards the end of each episode. But in the living room over here, we have two halogen lamps and then these sort of, I guess you could call these wall lights. I don't know. They're interesting looking, but uh, I, I think they work for just above our built-ins there. And then over here in the corner, we have another little lamp. Oh, dude, that has, that has three brightness settings. I didn't even know that. Let's put it on medium. That looks pretty solid, or I guess the, the middle one. You guys know what I'm saying. Now, just behind the couch, we have three fairly evenly spaced halogen bulbs, basically just supposed to illuminate this kind of false hallway that we've created. I don't think I'm going to do anything in this room today just because what do you do? I mean, what can you possibly do here? It is just a super boring, like, storage area, hallway, entryway. I don't know. I, I really don't know what we're going to do in there to be completely honest. But now that the lighting is all finished, we can finally move into the main floor bathroom. So in the previous episode, we did ditch the sink 
because it was not looking the greatest. And then we actually kept the shower because I wasn't sure if we should, you know, keep it or get something different. I do think I'm going to get something different. It's just not really matching the, the whole modern vibe we got going on here. The toilet, totally fine. I'm, I'm actually kind of stoked that we're going to have a, a top flush toilet for once. Normally we have the, the plunger on the side of the tank there, but let's find ourselves a new shower. Oh, you know what? There's actually a new shower that I haven't even seen yet. Oh no, it's cyberpunk though, isn't it? Oh God, they've added lights to it and everything. Can we get rid of the lights? Oh, we can. See, now it's not so bad. Now it actually looks kind of nice. Before I just straight up say no to this idea, I'm gonna try to mount it. Why is it not mounting? Is our install not there anymore? What the heck is going on with this thing, dude? Okay, let's let's get rid of that and we'll just try it again. Hopefully we have better luck with the sink, I guess. I'm not sure why that happened. It was almost like our installation was completely inside of the wall. Let's try to put this cyberpunk shower over here in the corner. Before I just say no to the idea of having a cyberpunk themed shower, I, I wanna install it just so we can really see what we're working with here. See if it's if it's worth keeping. You know, without the lights, it, there's nothing really cyberpunk about it. Honestly, I, I kind of like the look of that. I also like the kind of pocket door that we have here just on the just on the corner of that thing. I'm I'm a fan. And you know what? Thinking about this a little bit more now, why do we even have a shower in the main floor bathroom? We we really never do that. Normally we just do like a half bath have a toilet and uh, a sink in there. Let's see, I gotta remember what we had going on up here. Okay, so we'll have our full bathroom in the master bedroom, but then if we had like one of these other rooms be a guest room, they would not have their own bathroom. So I guess it does make a little bit more sense to have a shower down here. However, again, looking at this a little more closely now, it's not exactly lining up with the tile lines which I absolutely despise when we can't do a, a backsplash in our shower. So we're gonna, we're gonna try something different over here in the corner. I definitely think this one might be too big for the space and honestly might not match up with the, the wall tiles either, but I wanna try it anyways. Oh no. Oh no, I need to move the installation to the other side. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and fix that. Yeah, whoops. That's not supposed to be that way. Okay, let's try this all again. I think this time, there we go. It should be lining up properly. Perfect. So we just got to get those placed in, get the top done, and boom, we got ourselves a beautiful shower. Looks like this one is going to line up a little bit better with the tile. We'll have to see though. We'll have to see. We, we may end up changing it again. Now, for the sink, I think I want to do a floating sink. We're doing it, dudes and dudettes. We are doing it. We're bringing back the Hanging Sink Lamont. This used to be like our go-to sink, and it's honestly been quite a while since we've used it. So I feel like I feel like it's okay if we, you know, add this thing back into one of our properties at the very least. Also want to say a very happy Friday to all of you. I completely, oh, well, there's that. I completely forgot to say happy Thursday in uh, in the previous video, Thursday's video. And uh, man, I was just, I was so mad as I'm editing that. I'm like, you know, that's that's one of the things that I'm trying to incorporate in each episode, actually each video now. And uh, I know there's a handful of you out there that really appreciate me just sort of, you know, saying what's up, saying what's goody to you guys in the mix of things. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to keep doing that. Next up though, we got a mirror. And I'm trying to remember now which one we used to use all the time. I think it was just the standard one, was it not? We're gonna flip this thing around horizontally, place it down right there. And now for our big old sconce light. I really do wish they would add like some, some similar looking sconce things because this is a super, super common thing to use above a, uh, a sink like this with a mirror. So now that we have a big bulk of the furnishings complete, we have our lighting pretty much on lock. What I wanna focus on next is of course our wall coverings because we kind of painted everything this 
plain white and that's obviously not the end goal here we want this thing to you know be a bit more lively so i want to figure out what sort of color we could possibly use in the kitchen first and then we'll kind of make our way around to the other rooms of course i do still plan on using our white subway tile that we always use for our kitchen and bathroom backsplashes but it's just because it looks the best in my opinion maybe unpopular opinion so that does kind of limit us on our paint selection if you will i think the one i'm going to go with here is forest mist it's a bit between steel gray and beige gray so we'll place one of those down and we'll just see what this looks like we'll do a small little section over there you can see the color just at the top side of the wall and then we'll do a small little section over here just behind the refrigerator. I think that's gonna work out pretty well. Just because we decided to go with this forest mist for the top portion of our walls in the kitchen, that kind of meant that we just had to continue it on into the dining room as well, which kind of meant we had to continue that on into the living room as well, which kind of meant that we had to continue that into the hallway leading upstairs. But now that everything is unfortunately forest mist we can finally start working on the bathroom walls these things gotta go dude this is looking super dingy and super gross in here so we gotta address this an obvious choice would be forest mist but i'm not gonna do that but instead we're gonna try this sand almond on and see what we think about that i just think a tan color in the bathroom is it's probably gonna look the best let's see about this tile matching up behind the shower so right here, totally fine. You can see we'll have one, two, three, four different panels of tiling over there. But right here is where it gets weird. We almost have to bring the tile out past this sort of surrounding for the shower. And I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that, I'll be honest. So we're just going to paint from here on over. And uh, then next we'll be able to choose the tile. Thankfully, the shower that we chose actually has a, a sort of floor to it already so we don't actually have to worry about trying to match the existing tile in here or anything like that but i do think trying to use this tile on the walls in the shower might actually work out pretty well see this is the part that i don't really care for all that much i just hate how there's this this little sliver of tile that doesn't really need to be there but uh, i'm not not gonna lose any sleep over it i think that'll be just fine so there you guys have it that is our new bathroom. I think I'm going to move these lights around just a little bit so they're a bit more evenly spaced, though, real quick. This place is looking way better than it did when we first bought it. But what we need to do now is go through and just add in all the little piddly decorational bits and things, maybe even some trim, some like floor trim and stuff like that. So I will see you guys here in just a few minutes. Many, many minutes later. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have had quite enough of decorating for today. But let me walk you guys through what all we have now for the main floor of this property. Starting off in the living room, of course, you guys would have seen this when it was a little bit more bare, but now we have quite a bit more decor in the space. We got everything you could ever need, right? Books galore, wicker baskets on deck. We got four 2G spec Xbox controllers, of course, a Nintendo Switch, the Animal Crossing edition. I, of course, had to have Oxana come in so I could show her the kitchen cabinetry, and she loved it, but she did have another recommendation for something to add into this room. Actually, not, not really add, just more so reconfigure. So what she wanted me to do is actually move the lockers and the mirror around. So now we have this nice big mirror with just the greatest, I mean, the greatest reflection you have ever seen. And then now our lockers have been moved just over underneath the staircase. Still fairly accessible. I mean, you can still open the thing, so totally okay. Now, over into the dining room slash kitchen area, we have some really, really cool skateboard deck um, decor, I guess you could say. It's kind of like a, a painting that somebody has done just on the back of three skateboard decks and then they're just sort of mounted to uh, what looks like a 4x4 four four back there and then mounted into the wall. But I saw this in the Steam Workshop and I just had 
to get it, you guys. It's just, it's cool. Just to the right of that, we have our table setting over here. It's pretty much the same thing we usually do. Fork on the left, of course, because we're fancy AF. Then we have our spoons on the right, a bowl, a plate, and then like a, a place mat, I guess. But since there are eight chairs here, I wanted to do eight table settings. Couldn't fit it all. Just really couldn't fit it all. So we're, we're rocking the six and I think it actually looks pretty nice over there. This is really, really cool. This is a vintage record player that was actually originally intended for The Sims 4 that somebody then ported over and, uh, and made it available for House Flipper, which is pretty sick. We also have a little, uh, little you know, rustic looking container over here with some additional vinyl records. Now into the kitchen. You guys might have already noticed these bar stools. Yes, they are transparent and yes, they are also green. I just really wanted to capitalize on the green. The cabinetry has changed slightly since the last time you guys saw it as well. I added in this nice exhaust hood courtesy of the Steam Workshop once again. Most of the decorational stuff that we use is is likely from the Steam Workshop for those of you that are maybe wondering. So we lifted up the cabinets about six inches just so we could make room for that exhaust hood. But I really like the look of that just underneath the microwave. I think it really fits. We got a KitchenAid mixer. We got uh, olive oil and I think that's supposed to be vinegar. The red one could be wrong on that. A couple of spices over there. A really cool um, cutting board thing that somebody created. Uh, again, I think this was actually something intended for The Sims 4 that somebody also just sort of made a port over to a house flipper. So we have that over there. Got a robot vacuum chilling on the floor. Little coffee maker over here in the corner. Some cookbooks up here just on the on the windowsill. Lucky Cat, of course, and some paper towels with some, you know, different utensils and things you'd use in your kitchen. But that uh, that that's about everything. The bathroom really hasn't changed at all. It looks exactly the same, although we have some soap over there, some toilet paper, and then like some some framed photographs. Actually, these are like the the stock photographs, the ones you go out to the store to buy frames and they're just already in there. It kind of looks like someone just sort of left those instead of taking them out and swapping them out for, you know, a photo of you with your friends or you with your dog or your family or, or what have you. But ladies and gentlemen, I am absolutely decorated out today. So I think that is where we're going to wind down this episode at for today. But once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.